new, 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 new. Okay, kicking off, we have in the store the official Raspberry Pi starter pack, which comes with case, keyboard, mouse, power supply, USB cable, um, as well as, uh, yeah, sorry, keyboard and USB cable, two HDMI, two micro HDMI, US um, SD card and the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. Raspberry Pi 5 is not included, but uh, that's what it's designed for. If you pick up a Raspberry Pi 5, we stock them in four and eight gigabytes. You add this on, you know, basically for about a hundred bucks, you've got a full working computer as well as a starter kit to uh, get you started on how to use it. Next up. Uh, next up, we found a bunch of these uh, tricolor e-ink displays that, uh, honestly, I thought that we had sold through, but we didn't. So uh, they're in the store as a discount. If you would like a 152 by 152 tricolor e-ink display that we have drivers for in Arduino and CircuitPython, check it out. Um, you know, we tend to stock the two, tend to use the 200 by 200 pixel ones, but the 150 by 150 pixels are also uh, very fine quality. Um, and I think these use the SSD 1680 driver, which is quite popular. All right, next up. Uh, next up, um, by request, um, we had some folks email us and say, hey, can you make a little breakout board for STEM and QT? And I was like, well, why don't you use like a cable? And they're like, no, we want something that can like be put in a prototype. Um, so if you're breadboarding or perf boarding and you want to add a STEM and QT port, you can you know, solder this indirectly and you get a little port with mounting holes. So I was like, okay, you know, get something together. It's a very simple board, but it's effective. You get uh, your JST SH compatible connector on one end. You can plug your quick or STEM QT controllers or devices on the other side. It can work either way. Uh, and on LED, you can disable the LED if you like. Uh, and two 10K pull up resistors also disableable. Just cut these traces on the back. Um, solder some wire or header to it. And uh, you know, basically, a little breakout board that gets you your STEM QT port. Um, for use in your prototype. All righty, next up. Okay, another request, a lot of requests, but hey, you know, if you email us and ask for something, there's a good chance I'll make it for you. Um, we had some folks email and say they wanted like something that could simulate a PC fan. So it would generate a hundred hertz signal that you could then plug into your computer and it would think that you had a fan. So if you're using water cooling or oil cooling, uh, it wouldn't be like angry that you didn't have a fan connected. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, you know, like having a general purpose PWM generator is not a bad idea. Go to our friend, the 555, and uh, spun this together. So it's got a JST PH connector, so you can just plug and play, or you can uh, solder wire some pins on the bottom there if you'd like. Provide it with 3 to 12 volt DC, and then you can select the range from about 15 to 250 hertz with the switches on the left or 1.3 to 25 kilohertz if the switch is on the right. So kind of low frequency, high frequency. And then the fine frequency adjust, um, you twist the little potentiometer in the middle. And then you've got a nice solid square PWM output with a buffer. So you can use it to drive LEDs or even a small speaker if you wish. Um, and then there's a signal LED to let you know, you know, it, it pulses with the signal. Of course, it's at high frequencies, you're not gonna see it and an on LED. I thought I would show a quick demo. So this is it at the lower frequencies. So I, I twisted this all the way down and you can actually see the uh, this flickering. I mean, it's, it's, it's even to me, but of course the camera is picking it up a little funky, but it's flickering at about like, you know, 14 Hertz or so. And then as you twist it, um, it gets faster and faster and faster until it reaches about 250 hertz, which is the the max. If you see on the uh, on the left here, 250 is the maximum over here. If you flip the switch to the right, it goes up to it changes the capacitor, and now you're up to 25 kilohertz. You can see the little K there, or you can turn all the way down to about 1.4, 1.5 hertz uh kilohertz so you know kilohertz range on the right hertz range on the left um so it could be good for you know like this person wanted uh simulating a pwm fan tachometer output but also if you just need like a square wave or like you know testing some audio stuff and you want like a 10 kilohertz square wave just to see like what 
you know, is your, are you getting an audio path or something or maybe modulating an LED? I don't know. I think like a general purpose PWM, PWM maker. Anyways, so this is a 555 timer stemmo board. Alrighty, and star tonight besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, the open source community is. Da, 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 da. Dun, da, da. Okay, the Sen 54 adapter, which maybe let me get. Hold on, I got I got to get rid of this demo to show the other demo. It's too many too many demos. Um, okay, so the Sen 54 is we don't actually sell it, but Digikey does. So go pick it up from them, and uh, we featured it in INMPI. It's an all-in-one air quality sensor that has um, volatile organic compound sensing, um, temperature, humidity, and then uh, PM, so particulate matter 1, 2.5, 4, and 10. So you kind of get a, a range of particulate matters. And so it's, you know, other than CO2, it has kind of everything you want to detect air quality. Um, but one of the things about it, if you go to the overhead, is it has this connector, it's a JST GH connector. And then another thing that's a little annoying is you definitely need five volts. There's this little fan that sucks air in and for it to um, work, you need to give it five volts at hundred milliamps. But a lot of folks don't necessarily have five volts because you're using a 3.3 volt microcontroller. Maybe they're running off a battery, you know, or you, you, you just can't, you don't necessarily have a five volt um, power output. So this adapter board, first off, it gives you the GH connector. So you just use one of our GH to GH cables. So it's like plug and play. And then down here, this is a five volt booster. So even if you're powering it from three volts, like on uh, this ESP32 uh, S3 Cutie Pie, um, you get a five volt power output and then the I squared C signals going through. So then I can reset this. You can see it's initializing sensor. Okay, and then you get the temperature and uh, you can kind of see the PM 2.5 signals over here. Um, so with STEM IQT, you know, it's plug and play, it's super easy. Um, now you don't have to do any wiring or soldering or, or connecting up a, a boost converter because it's ready to go get not only the cable adapter, but the power adaptation as well. Alrighty, and with that is new products. New, 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 new,